brought an unashamed attitude. An unashamed attitude. Now, if you talk back to me, we're going to have a little journey. We're going to have a good time. We're going to go home. An unashamed attitude. In today's society, many people are very concerned with their physical appearance. Women are concerned with the shape and the curves of their body, how flawless their makeup is, how flowing their hair is, how manicured their nails are, and I need not to mention how gorgeous their shoes could be. Men, we are not excluded. We have our own concerns. How neatly shaven we are, you know, how tight our shape up is for the young folks. How does that suit match that tie? Or does that pants leg just lay just right on that particular shoe? No matter what it is, everything has to be neat and perfectly in place. Some of us ha have the best of everything, and even if we don't need it, we, if it's new and stylish, we want it. What I'm all, it's always startling to me, especially now that school's about to open up, how young men and young women want the most expensive tennis shoes, shirts and jeans, but have no money to buy it, and they don't want to do anything to earn it. Young girls want the best weave, and the flyest and tightest dresses, and the highest heels they think they can walk in, only from the bus to the school front door. And, and, the, and the young men, like I said, they want the flyest jeans, they want the highest tennis shoes, the $300 tennis shoes that just came out, they want all of that, but they have nothing to earn from. As these children grow older, most of them want the nicest cars and the biggest house, the best clothes, the biggest salaries, and the biggest fan base or friend base on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And as long as they're in public, they appear to be unashamed of the fact that they are broke, beat down, disgusted, and maybe even depressed. They appear to be living fine, but are living maybe check to check, and only one mishap from losing their mind. Yes, sir. Some of us in here might be in that same place tonight, knowing, not knowing how the bills are going to get paid. Don't have gas in your car, nor even food in your refrigerator, but instead of asking for help, you want to appear that you have it all together. Please, I'm going to ask you, don't look at your neighbor, because they might know I'm telling your story, and I don't want to embarrass anybody. Well, I, 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 I like to let you know that I live to work. I don't live to work, excuse me, I don't live to work, but I work to live. Yeah. I work to provide for my family as God has provided for me. I work to see my family enjoy life and have a better future. I don't work to have my neighbors envious of me, of the jealous or jealous of the things that I buy. I don't work to come to church in a fancy car or in a fancy clothes to impress you, but they can't pay my bills or give more than a dollar. If I can't afford it right now. I refuse to go further with them. I would rather just wait. And if God makes provision for me, then I will get not only what I want, but I might also have everything that I need. Can anybody testify that I'm so glad I've been blessed by the best? I've got life. I've got health. I've got strength. I've got a car. I might even be riding a bus. I've got a job, but I'm, or I might be employed. I've I got a house. Or I might even be homeless. I may be rich or I may be poor. I may be young and I may be old. Or I may be old, but I'm still blessed. And I still have joy. And I still have peace. And I still have love. And every single day we're all giving grace and mercy. I don't need things to make me happy. I got Jesus. And somebody can say, that's enough. That's enough. If, if we live in an ideal world, Everyone in here would be walking around naked in our community. There would be no sin. There would be no murder. There would be no stealing and no crime. There would be no HIV or no AIDS, no cancer. There would be no high blood pressure. There would be no fornication or no adultery. There would be no depression. No drug habits, no smoking, no alcoholism, or even low self-esteem. There would be no poverty, no homelessness, no foreclosures, nor even any runaway children. There would be no worshiping of false gods. Uh, there would just get, you know, let me paint a picture for you. And there would be no 
nor any kind of diseases that would cause us hurt, harm, or danger. In the essence, the world would be just as God had intended for it to be when he formed it from nothing to reality. But you see, as we look at our text, we see that Adam and Eve were naked and they were not ashamed of being exposed. Before sin entered into their life, they were content with all the things that God had provided for them already in abundance. They didn't need anything. They didn't want for anything. And anything they wanted or needed, God already provided it. You see, God had given Adam rule over everything. And when he needed something or he wanted something, it was given to him. God's favor was all over him. In addition, as a result of Adam's relationship with God, God also favored Eve. God was in their mouths and God was in their thoughts and God was in their spirits and God was even in their presence. If they spoke it, it was there. If they thought it, they could have it. They were only required to worship God. It wasn't even in spirit of truth. Why not? There was no deceitfulness in, in it. There was no separation. There was no lying and there was no sin. There was nothing in them that would have caused them to break their relationship they had with God. All they knew were good, was good. All they had to do every day was praise and worship. Wake up in the morning and praise. Eat, praise him. Laugh, praise him. Relax, praise him. Eat some more and worship. Spend some time alone with each other and praise. Clean up their house and praise. Tend to whatever chores needs to be done in their community and praise. But day in and day out, all they had to do was praise and worship God for all, what, all he was doing in their lives, Adam and Eve was truly living in prosperity. But you see, God also gave Adam and Eve free will. Free will is simply the ability to think for yourself. They can think for themselves, but they also knew what good living was. They only had one rule. Do not eat of the tree of good and evil. And evil. They had no point of reference of what bad living would be like, except for that God told Adam, if you eat of this tree, you will die. But if you read the story, God never spoke to Eve until after she and Adam had eaten the fruit. This is what I see in the text. Men, we always need to be praying for our spouses. That when the devil comes to tempt her, she has heard from us and seen us in a way that allows her to know how to handle a sinful situation. Women, even if it looks good, it may not be good for you. And if it's not good for you, almost assuredly, it's not good for your husband. Men and women, we have to be in the covering for each other. I've got to pray for my wife, and my wife has to pray for me. I've got to have my wife's back, and my wife has to have my back. We have to work together to become a finely tuned team, a family that prays together. You all know all about it. Well, the, we all know the creation story. They have put, they have everything, but this one tree they came from. For some of us, it may seem to be make perfect sense. We can have all this great stuff God has already provided for us. And as long as we don't eat from this one tree, we're going to be okay. But for some of us, we want it all or nothing. Mm -hmm. And that all gets us into a world of trouble where we can lose everything. But in verse 4 and 7, you see, the serpent convinces Eve to eat, and she also feeds some to Adam. The perspective of their living condition changes immediately. Immediately they realize they're naked, and they need to put on something on their bodies. Immediately they cover themselves.